Hello and welcome back to the stars everybody. Welcome back to Starfield where today we're going to be ranking all of the heavy weapons in Starfield. This is going to be just looking at the base weapon itself. This is not going to be including mods which I know a lot of people have said well modded weapons are way stronger which is true and I do plan on doing another list like this going over the base weapons and then how strong their modded counterparts become. Are they substantially stronger or just a little bit stronger. That's going to be a list for the future though. We're not going to be talking about it here. So let's begin. Our very first one is the cutter. The cutter is actually the very first weapon that you get in Starfield. A uh, sort of weapon. It's technically a tool and it's supposed to be used for breaking up rocks and for that job it's well I guess the best because it's the only thing that can do it. You can also use this as a tool in a couple of other areas like cutting away doors which can be useful and if need be you can use this as a weapon. It does have infinite ammo although it does have a, a set amount of charge to it so you do have to wait for that to replenish over time. Actually making this a really strong and pretty reliable weapon in the very start of the game when you don't really have much going for you especially when you can run into ammo issues. So far I've only played Starfield on the very hard difficulty and ammo issues can kind of plague the early game. The cutter you don't have to worry about that with although it does have limited range and you can technically use this in sort of one of two ways. It has a regular beam and then if you hold in your secondary which would normally be like your ADS it seems to speed the beam up and more concentrate the beam on the enemy. This can be okay. This doesn't do very high damage per hit unless you count the final rank of the laser tier with this. This one is affected by the laser ability, not really so much in terms of damage. The damage doesn't really matter. It does count towards the last tier of the laser ability, which any hit with a laser weapon has a 5% chance to light the enemy on fire. This also stacks multiple times too, and the cutter is the best for doing this because it hits so often because it counts as like a tick weapon. This one actually makes it way better. If you're just using regular cutter, you haven't specced into it and you're just gonna be using it for the early game. It's actually pretty decent in the early game. I would say it's like C tier then or B tier. It's actually pretty good. It will fall off later once you start getting ammo and it could be all the way down in D tier if you don't wanna go with laser weapons whatsoever, which I mean makes sense. But if you do actually have the laser skill maxed out, this one I would actually say is like a B tier overall. It's still not going to be the best in every situation because even though it can melt big enemies quickly, it doesn't actually do that well against higher leveled enemies that have armor. These are usually human enemies. I don't think the armor actually matters, but the higher leveled the enemy gets, the more damage resistant it gets and lighting it on fire won't really do that much to it. That being said, not every enemy is like this though, because you can actually burn Terramorphs with this. It's surprisingly fast, weirdly enough. I don't know why it is. And the cutter is sometimes surprising in how good it is at least with that particular skill. If you don't have that particular skill, I would say it goes down to C or D tier, C tier in the early game or B tier in the early game, just because no ammo, that's cool. Most enemies aren't super strong. You can just kind of melt them with this, especially if you're fighting like aliens, then you don't have to be wasting your bullets and you can use them on human enemies. Next heavy weapon is the arc welder. And the arc welder is probably my least favorite of the heavy weapons. It seems like a cool idea and it is kind of cool to see, but it just doesn't seem that great. This one shoots out an arc of lightning that zaps enemies and this does okay damage per second. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage per hit and it can eat through ammo really fast. This fires the 3 kilovolt laser charge which is not really a great use of that particular charge because you could also put this in the Orion and you'd have a much better weapon overall and I don't think it's a really great use of ammo. That being said though if you're building specifically for heavy weapons and you just want to use this because you have extra ammo for it, it's okay enough, but really not that great. It also has limited range overall, so you do have to get kind of close with this, and you do need a kind of clear line of sight to hit enemies with this, so I would put this one actually into D tier. I'm not a huge fan of this weapon, unless I'm just missing something and there's some sort of like overpowered elemental strat. I don't think this one is really one of the better ones. Maybe with certain legendary effects on this, it can be a whole lot better. Most of the time I get these and they're like bashing arc welders so you can just beat stuff up with it, which bash is probably one of the worst legendary effects in the game. Anyway, up next we have the Bridger. And the Bridger is a lever action grenade launcher and it looks really cool. I really like the look of this weapon. This weapon fires out the 40 millimeter grenades. This does pretty high damage on hit. It also does splash damage because this is a grenade launcher so you can hit multiple enemies with this. It has pretty good sights on it too. I do like the sights. Its reload is a little bit slow, but not terrible. And its capacity is a little bit low, having four just in its base. The main problem with this one is just finding 40 millimeter grenades. They're not super common to find just laying around the place. 
even if you have scavenger with some ammo you still don't find them very often you find a lot of other more common ammo like the 6.5 and the 7.77 or the 11 millimeter I found those to be way more common than like 40 millimeter grenades. Same goes with almost every other ammo type. Shopkeepers don't sell them too often either. And when vendors do have them, they're usually fairly expensive. So you don't get to use this a whole lot. You can get this weapon fairly early on into the game, which is nice, but you're not going to be able to use it very much, which is kind of disappointing. I'm going to put the Bridger into B tier. I think it's fine just because of the ammo issues. If it didn't have that problem going for it, it might be a little bit higher because this one is really nice for actually fighting certain enemies, especially if enemies want to keep taking cover, you can just hammer a wall that's next to them and keep splashing damage to them, just like any explosive weapon. So it does have kind of that going for it. Our next weapon is the Auto Riveter. The Auto Riveter is another kind of disappointing weapon, more of a tool that's been converted into a weapon. The Auto Riveter actually does really high damage per hit, and you can get your rivets back after you've hit an enemy because they can still stick inside of them, similar to arrows and other Bethesda games. And that's kind of cool, but it has such a low rate of fire and it's not super accurate either. I found that it's fairly inaccurate past like medium range. So you can't even use this as super long range. I was hoping that this one functioned a little bit differently because I was really excited to see this. I figured I can make a big daddy build or something. The rivets are also sometimes rare to find. You don't find them very often. Vendors can sometimes sell them, but again, not super often. This does hold a decent amount of shots holding 10 normally. But with its rate of fire and with its accuracy problems, I don't find myself really using this that much. And it's kind of underwhelming. And I would put it like C tier. I think it's very like mediocre. Up next is the micro gun, our very own handheld mini gun. This one fires the 7.77 caseless round, which is one of the more common rounds, which is nice. It's good that the mini gun actually has a common round for this. I do wish it would shoot the 6.5 though over this because there's a lot of good 7.77 guns. The Grendel's pretty decent, the Beowulf is really good, and the Kodama is also pretty good. This one, I think, chews through ammo a little bit too quickly. It does have good damage per second, although it does have low damage per shot, as you would kind of expect with a weapon like this. It holds a lot of rounds in it, and it has a really fast rate of fire, and it is actually surprisingly accurate, too. This is a weapon that can be good if you have an excess amount of the 7.77 rounds. If you don't have that, then I would recommend that you just don't use this. Or if you're using another weapon that you really enjoy using this, like the Kodama or the Beowulf, I would also suggest that you don't really use this. Unless again, you just have an excess amount of bullets. You have, you know, 10,000 plus bullets and you just have to use them. In which case then, yeah, the micro gun's perfectly fine for that. So I would say if you are using it in that role and you have tons of bullets and you don't really care about wasting them, this one's actually probably like A tier. It's actually pretty good and pretty consistent against most enemies. If you are using other weapons like the Beowulf though and the Kodama, I would say this one's a little bit lower. I would say this one's B or C tier just because of how quickly it can chew through ammo. Then we have the Mag Storm. The Mag Storm is basically the Mag Shear scaled up to a minigun now. And this one's really cool. This one has a really high rate of fire, fairly low damage per shot, but really high damage per second. Holds a lot of rounds with it. It's also very accurate because it has just a gigantic square that you have to put somewhere on the target and it will just send all the bullets its way. Shreds through basically everything, including your ammo. So again, this is like the micro gun situation where if you don't have a whole lot of the 50 cal MI array, don't use this because you're just going to use it up and you're not going to have anything for your mag shear after this. But if you don't care or you're not using a mag shear and you just have this for all the excess bullets, this one's, I would say, even better than the micro gun. And I would say it's up and S tier again, if you have that huge amount of ammo reserve. If you don't have that huge amount of ammo reserve, I would say that this one gets knocked down quite a bit too, because the mag shear is really strong and just really solid across the board, especially if you get like the Revenant, the unique version of it, or just a high roll on legendary effects or something. But again, we're not going to try to include that because if you get all the Revenant's effects on this, it's also going to be crazy. And then our last heavy weapon is the Negotiator. This is the 40 millimeter grenade launcher that uh, is more like a normal grenade launcher, or at least a standard grenade launcher that you see in a lot of other games. This one's got a rotary drum in it, or I guess technically a drum mag because you pull the whole thing off and put a new one in. Holds a lot of shots in it. This one does good damage per shot, good damage per second because it does have explosive damage and you can hit multiple enemies with this. It doesn't fire super quick, but it fires a little bit faster than the Bridger. Again, the main issue with this one is just going to come down to ammo. If you don't have ammo for it, it's just not going to be that great. It's a pain to find ammo. It's a pain to buy ammo. If you do have extra ammo, though, I would say this one's like an easy A tier. It is really good in any sort of team fight setting, especially where you can hit multiple enemies. 
but you're going to be running out of shots with it pretty often unless you're constantly looking for those and restocking and only using it for big area effects. And that's kind of the problem with a lot of these heavy weapons is that they kind of fall short compared to other weapons or you only get to use them in certain situations. And we are probably going to go over all of the weapons once again, but we're going to be comparing them from the base version up to their strongest version and my favorite loadout that I have with them. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys have a great day out there in the stars exploring all the planets. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.